I run a small, in fashion we call it boutique agency. Um, we are a marketing, branding, public relations consultancy based just outside Glasgow and we specialise in the fashion, lifestyle, health, beauty and entertainment sector. How did I get my first break? Well, I was studying at Stirling University and it was a break that actually changed my destiny. I was studying marketing in Spanish um, and I volunteered to work at the Special Olympic Games, which was taking place in Glasgow in 1990, showing my age now. And they were looking for interns and undergraduates to work in their marketing and public relations department. And I got the job and it was for eight weeks. Um, and the chap I was working directly into took ill and he was employed by the Kennedy Foundation which run the Special Olympics from America and they had to find somebody you know who had an understanding um, of their brand and I'd only been there like three weeks so they actually started to pay me and said you are now a proper employee for the summer and you will be the runner stroke assistant called whatever it takes running into the marketing director who was coming over from America. And it was the most incredible experience because I think as a student, you take on these roles, but they actually really do shape who you are and who you become. Um, I think you've got to be prepared to do anything. I was literally doing everything from making teas, photocopying, finding Carmen rollers for a celebrity. And at the same time, you know, if you're given a bit of responsibility, I was picking up VIPs from the airport. I was seeing how an opening ceremony is organized. I was working hand in hand with the directors that were over from America. And it was just the most, you know, life-changing experience in the sense of to be thrown straight into the deep of it, you know, and that's why internships are so important. So much so the following summer, uh, my graduating year, they offered me a job in their World Games. I went out to stay um, with a marketing director who I remain friends with today in Washington DC and I worked at the State Department with them for a while um, and then down at their games in Minneapolis um, and it was just phenomenal. Um, long hours, you know, the American work ethic is really, really tough but I think if you're doing something that you enjoy and you're reaping all the knowledge and learning as you go and every day is a school day as they say, then it is just, you know, a, an incredible opportunity. So, so that's how I got my big break. How did I get started in my own business? Well, after um, working with the Special Olympic Games, they actually offered me a job in their London office. Um, so I went to work in London. I stayed with them for about a year and a half, and then I switched to an American above the line ad agency. Um, worked there, getting great experience um, across FMCG brands. At the time, my passion was always fashion, and a lot of my friends were, you know, artists and creatives and young fashion designers, and that was really where my thirst was. But in actual fact, the experience I gained working in this um, amazing agency was learning entirely about production, about above the line marketing and advertising below the line sales promotion you know it was really a kind of they put you through every single aspect of the business so you'd a thorough understand i even went to work at a printers to understand you know color process finishing you know production um which i think is really important you know to get as much experience as possible and would you believe i actually one of our clients was a burger brand and they felt the account team should have an understanding and to have an understanding You've guessed it, I had to work behind a counter and I wore the hat and the outfit, the whole thing for a day at the Piccadilly branch, which itself was a life changing experience. But you know, after after I did that, you know, I actually understood that when we were coming up with campaigns and creative ideas, would it actually work at point of sale? Would it work on the floor? Um, and I think you can apply that to a lot of things I do now, particularly in fashion, to have an understanding of fashion, you really need to understand the business of fashion. So I think all these things shape who you are. And I decided I wanted to come home and set up my own business and I had a lot of knowledge because in the evenings I would go do freelance PR for lots of different young fashion designers and things and all my contacts were there. I came back to Glasgow and set up um, the first, if you like, specialising in fashion and lifestyle in Scotland. And I was very lucky I got a graduate into business scheme. I got local startup grants from my enterprise trust. Um, and I came with a with an account because I felt that, you know, um, I had to, you know, give myself a, a meanings to live. Um, and that's how it started. And that was 16 years ago, over 16 years ago now, I'm really showing my age. <laughs> Thank you.
Well, for me, you know, I think people think of fashion and they think about catwalks and glamour and, you know, what's projected from that, from the fashion glosses. When I think about fashion, I think of it as a form of free speech, you know, for centuries people have used clothes and body adornment as a form of non-verbal communication. And instantly there's an indication of their occupation, of their rank, of their gender. You know, almost in a bygone era, it was a class. You know, you instantly knew where people were from because of their, their you know, their, how, they, how they dressed. Um, I think, you know, fashion can be perceived as a language of symbols. You know, probably a lot of people watching this today, maybe they dip dye their hair, maybe they've got a pierced navel. But it represents a kind of iconography to them to express their individuality. Um, so for me, fashion is a barometer of cultural change. Um, I think that's why when you go back to the Victorian era and they used it kind of a visual metaphor to recognise who people were in society. I think one thing we can be absolutely sure of today in fashion prompts debate. In significant volumes, it's a form of consumption. It's a social phenomenon, it's an identity maker, it's pure social reality. Um, it's irrational, it's fickle, it's volatile, but you put all of that together and I think that's why it's very addictive and that's certainly why I love it. Well, I set up the Scottish Fashion Awards eight years ago, it's our eighth anniversary, and really we set it up to provide a platform to the incredible wealth of talent that work within the business of fashion all over the world, um, from designers, from you know, fashion business leaders, from creatives, to photographers, to models, to journalists, to visual merchandisers. Um, you know, it's just so vast. And, you know, in the last 16 years, I kept coming across all these amazing characters that were Scottish and working in the global fashion Arena. And I think also, you know, living in Scotland undoubtedly is a challenge to succeed in the world of fashion. And I think we've got to use this kind of viral social global platform we have and give all the fresh talent coming through, all the manufacturing that holds such incredible heritage from our textiles. Um, and we need to highlight it, we need to celebrate it, we need to honour it. And that's what we try and do every year. And, and you know, it's like my first baby, I call it. Uh, it's just so exciting to, to watch the young designers evolve from some of the brilliant schools we have all over all over Scotland um, and down south and it's great to see them making their way um, and succeeding in, in what is a highly highly competitive business sector. Applying for your first job, well, I've just done a lot of interviews myself actually, we were recruiting in the company and one of the things that struck me that um, a, lot of, a lot of young students don't do is they don't research their market sector. For example, I am a reader, you know, you're finishing university, you're going on to the university of life, you have at your fingertips the, you know, instant knowledge online. I don't think people use it enough. I think we talk about it and, you know, we're on our phones, we're addicted to our texting, but in actual fact, what, you know, for example, what do we know about fashion in Scotland? How many people does the sector employ? Um, how big is our textiles industry? So when you come in for an interview, you really need to make sure you know your stuff. There's absolutely no excuse for not having that knowledge and the extra knowledge, the extra knowledge that's going to impress that person that you're going to see. Um, history of their company, not just the first couple of lines you read on the website, I also think, you know, when I was, you know, going back 20 years when I was applying for my first job, I was desperate to get into, um, you know, the entertainment and that, that kind of PR world. And, you know, I did a lot of what we call one month work placements and I got them because I, I like to think outside the box. So I remember mocking up a magazine and I wrote the features and I mocked it up on a computer and that was my CV. So it actually looked like an actual page out of the magazine that I wanted to work for for four weeks and I got the job. And I think that people, you know, knowledge is everything online and it looks so great and you know the animation and the potential to make something look good is there. I think it's so competitive now that it's not just your background that's going to impress an employer. I think you need to think outside the box, you need to show them what you can do and I think that's where creativity applies um, 
with a kind of, you know, looking for your job position. I think that's really important. But what I don't accept for students is um, no political knowledge, no, you know, modern studies, information. You know, they just have this lack of what's going on in the world. You know, they think of Scotland. Do they know what's happening in Europe? Do they know what's happening in the Middle East? Do they know what's happening all over the world? Because we are a global society now, particularly in fashion. Um, and believe it or not, everything that's happening regionally and internationally has a direct effect on the brand's decisions in this market place so I think that people should read a newspaper every day you can get it online there's no excuse for it I think they should read European newspapers every day I think they should absolutely soak themselves in knowledge um, and there's absolutely no excuse for it so get busy what shouldn't they do in their first job moan trippy face can't stand it you know, if you're lucky enough to get a job because it's really tough times out there just now in the marketplace, but if you do get that job, I want to see you smiling. I want to see you be grateful. You're blessed to get this position. You're there to learn. And you know, if someone asks you to answer the phone or get the donuts or, you know, jump out and do errands, then that's what you do. You suck it up and you learn. Um, and that's what life is all about. And you know, I still do it. You know, I still do loads of things that other people would think are too menial, but you know, it's a team society we have now, and it's a contribution from everybody that gets the best effect for the business. So I don't like to see anybody moaning, I don't like to see any trippy faces, I don't like to see anyone going in a huff. You know, a new student when you ask them to do something and they they moan and they go in the huff about it, it's really not a good look. So that would be my, my best advice for them, no moaning. What should they do? Believe in themselves. You know, this is the start of the rest of your life and you have to believe 110% in your own abilities in your own dreams. You know, if you wake up every day and you don't have a dream, then what's it all about? You know, I'm married now, I have four children. I still have big dreams and I, I certainly haven't reached them all yet. And I think that's the most important thing a student needs to have confidence and belief in their own abilities. And when you visualize your future, when you visualize where you want to be, I think it goes a long way to getting you down that road. And sure, you're gonna have ups and downs, you know, we need to embrace failure. Sometimes things don't want to be, um, you know, the way they are. Um, and that's just the way life is. But with utter belief, confidence, hard work, dedication, you really can get where you want to go. My favorite business quote, hmm, I think Winston Churchill. Success is not final, failure is not fatal. It's the courage to continue that really counts. My favourite fashion quote's got to be Coco Chanel. None of the stereotypical ones. Um, she said, I don't understand how a woman can leave the house without fixing herself up a little, if only out of politeness for others. How true. 